The accuracy with which we can observe our environment with satellites depends primarily on the different characteristics of their sensors. After all, it is the sensor's properties which control how detailed the information about the Earth's surface can be. One of these properties is the spectral resolution. It provides information about the ability of a sensor to distinguish between the ranges of the electromagnetic spectrum. The spectral resolution of a sensor increases with the number of channels in which it can receive ranges of the electromagnetic spectrum. The sensors used in remote sensing record wavelength ranges in specific spectral channels. But what happens next? The information captured by each channel is stored as a grayscale image. In each grayscale image, the intensity of the reflection in different areas of the Earth is recorded for the specific wavelength range of that channel. What does the reflection intensity of surfaces, which we see in the grayscale image, tell us? A couple of things. But first, we need to understand that different materials have unique spectral signatures, meaning they absorb and reflect light from various wavelengths differently. We can distinguish objects from one another by looking at their reflection behavior. Sensors with more spectral channels allow us to see the spectral signature of an object with more precision. This also makes it easier for us to separate objects from one another. By using the spectral signatures, we can differentiate between healthy and stressed vegetation, as they have different absorption behavior. Most Earth observation satellites are equipped with multispectral sensors. Modern multispectral sensors, such as the MSI on board of Sentinel-2, collect information in many channels, in this case 12. If one looks closer at the wavelength ranges, we can see that a channel doesn't just correspond to one wavelength. Instead, it picks up a specific wavelength range and averages its information. This is necessary because the signal obtained from multiple wavelengths is much stronger than that of a single wavelength. In addition, not all channels are adjacent to each other. So sometimes there are large gaps of wavelength ranges in the electromagnetic spectrum in which no information is collected. This is because the atmosphere doesn't allow certain wavelengths to pass. So we must place the channels in so-called atmospheric windows, where the wavelengths can penetrate the atmosphere and be reflected to the sensors. Ultimately, the field of application determines the ranges in which the spectral channels are located. Although the spectral resolution of multispectral sensors has risen in recent years, much information about the properties of surfaces is still unknown. Modern hyperspectral sensors are about to close these gaps. Hyperspectral sensors have several hundred channels and thus a very high spectral resolution. They continuously cover a much larger range of the electromagnetic spectrum, but to get this technology into space is complicated. Therefore, sensor systems such as the ISS DESIS, which observes the Earth in 240 channels in the visible and near-infrared range, are still pioneers in this field. However, the opportunities presented by hyperspectral imaging are promising, and the first operational satellite systems with this revolutionary technology are about to be launched. The spectral resolution of sensors gives us information about their ability to reproduce the spectral properties of surfaces as accurately as possible. The higher the number of spectral channels, the higher the spectral resolution. The spectral resolution has increased in recent years, and today we're already working with hyperspectral sensor systems that have many hundreds of channels and allow us to get even more and more accurate information about the surface of our planet.